Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at finding the curve of intersection of two surfaces and we're going to do a vector function to represent that curve. So here we've got two curves. We've got a paraboloid, z equals 4x squared plus y squared, and a parabolic cylinder. So just get an idea of what those two look like in your mind first and then try to think about the curve of intersection of those two. So just take a second, pause the video, whatever you need to do, try to get these two visually in your mind first. Okay, so this is what these two surfaces look like. The first one here is actually um, this paraboloid. So the paraboloid here is something that's opening upward, and I've just plotted it in the first quadrant because that's where the intersection occurs. But that's the paraboloid right there. And then throw the parabolic cylinder on that the x equals y squared or sorry the y equals x squared if you look at it in the xy plane it's just a parabola but now in the 3d di direction z could be anything so it's a parabolic cylinder so we plot those two on top of each other we see they do intersect right here in a in an interesting looking curve so let's go back and try to figure out how to represent this curve of intersection with a vector function all right so we've got y as a function of x and then we can also then write z as a function of x by substituting whatever y is in right here. So z, we could say, is equal to 4x squared plus x squared squared by substituting what the parabolic cylinder is into the paraboloid equation. So this would be equal 4x squared plus x to the 4. So now it looks like we can get everything in terms of x, so why not just let x be the parameter? So let's let x equal t, and then y would equal t squared, and then z would equal 4t squared plus t to the 4. So that would actually be our vector function that would represent this curve of intersection. r of t would be t, t squared, 4t squared, plus t to the 4. And we'll just assume that t starts out at 0, but it could start at any negative value, but we'll just say t greater or equal to 0. So that would start at the origin and then go out. So let's plot this vector function in addition to those two surfaces. So when I throw that vector function there, ah, Look at that. That vector function that we just found is indeed that curve of intersection. It's the green line here. So that curve of intersection right there is x equals t, y equals t squared, z equals 4t squared plus t to the 4. So that's a common thing to do. Whenever you have a um, scenario where all three can be represented as a function of x, then you might as well just let x be the parameter. If that's not the case, maybe there's some kind of circular symmetry. Maybe there's a cylinder, like a circular cylinder involved or a sphere or something like that. Maybe the curve of intersection is some kind of circle in some sense. Then you might let x equal um, the radius of the circle times cosine of t and then y equal the radius of the circle sine of t. But it just depends on the problem. But here we got all our function of x, so we can just say that that's going to be the way we represent this vector function.